Hello, thank you for joining us. You're listening to a special edition of Mobility Insights, an ISC podcast. Presented by ISE Magazine and AT&T Mobility. ISE equals ICT Solutions and Education. Hi, this is Janice Oliva, President of ISE Magazine, with a special edition of Mobility Insights, brought to you by ISE, AT&T, and Cisco. Today, our guests are David Eastall, AT&T HQ Area Manager, Emerging Technology, Cisco SON, and Duran Oz, Cisco's AT&T SON partner. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Today, our topic is SON, and we're going to talk about why it's important to AT&T and its customers. First, we're going to hear from Duran with an industry's perspective on SON, and then we'll hear from David, who will share with us the AT&T version of what they're doing today with SON and how it's going to move them into the future. But first, let's hear more about SON from Cisco, AT&T's SON partner. Duran, what are the challenges faced by mobile operators in 2017, and how does SON fit in to help them with those challenges? Well, here in Cisco, looking at the mobile operators, we like to call the challenges they face the four C challenges. And what are those four Cs? Well, the first C is capacity. Data usage just goes through the roof. We all know those exponential graphs showing network usage. Video is no longer only a low-resolution YouTube clip you're watching on a tiny screen, but full-length HD movies streamed to tablets with retina displays, and that has quite an impact on the network. The second C is coverage. Mobile networks used to be about connecting people on the go. But today, it's not only about people on the go. It's mostly indoors where the coverage challenge is much greater. People expect their phones and tablets to just work wherever they are, indoors or outdoors. The third C is complexity. You know, it's not that networks were simple in the past, but look at the mobile ran a few years ago with GSM. You thought that was complex? Look at it today. It's 2G, 3G, LTE, macro cells, femto cells, pico cells, Wi-Fi, all in the same geographical place. Networks become more and more complex, and you need to manage all those networks. And the last C, the challenge that ties together all the other challenges, is cost. And that's the most important one. Customers are expecting the operators to keep up and stream their HD movies over LTE in the gym, but they're not willing to pay more. The complexity grows, but the costs need to be kept under control. And that's exactly where Sun comes in. Sun is there to boost the agility of the network and reduce costs for the operators. If you optimize the network, you can squeeze more out of your current install base, which means you can defer and save on CapEx. And it's very exciting because all operators realize this. But it's not only on CapEx. Sun is not only about optimization. It's also becoming an automation tool, helping to put OpEx spending under control as well. It's just like everyone's talking these days about self-driving cars, right? Well, Sun is essentially a self-driving network. Here in Cisco, we built our Sun solution from the ground up as a closed-loop, automatic, autonomous solution for multi-technology and multi-vendor networks. And it's quite amazing to see how the majority of the world's biggest mobile network operators today are trusting our products to run their networks. And I have to say, AT&T identified this a long time ago, long before all the others caught on. They started as an early adapter and became the leader in using Sun to automate their radio network, and they're still spearheading this today. Thank you. That's a very good overview. So, what's the next thing Sun will do to help operators get ready for the next year's challenges? An interesting thing that we see with operators around the world is that once you've optimized the RAN, once you got that out of the way, you realize there's so much more than that that actually affects the user experience. And that's what really matters. Of course, radio conditions are one of the key factors affecting quality of mobile devices, but a user experiencing choppy video doesn't really care whether it's because handover failures or a congestion backhaul or a core network issues. He's just going to complain about the choppy video. Now, to optimize for user experience, you really need to do two things. First, you have to measure user experience. So you have to focus on 
KQIs instead of KPIs, basically quality instead of performance. And you need to do that at the user level and not cell or network level. It doesn't help you to know the average dropped call rate on a cell when a user complains about choppy video. The second thing you need to have is visibility and control over your network end-to-end. -end. So siloed solutions don't really solve the problem. So sometimes the problem domain is not the solution domain. For example, if you have a problem with over-the-top video quality, the solution might actually be in the RAND domain. So it might be two completely different things. Uh, you're trying to solve a video problem, but you do that by tilting antennas. And that's exactly where we're taking Sun. The revolution that we brought to the RAN with Sun a few years ago, we're going to expand that to look at the end-to-end -end network and to optimize for user experience. The other thing that will be important when looking at tomorrow's network is making sure that the infrastructure is there for true automation of the network. Mobile networks used to be relatively simple. I mentioned the complexity of the networks today. All the different technologies that coexist in the same geographical area they are serving a lot of devices, IoT devices, and managing that whole thing is just becoming a nightmare. Offloading and automating tasks like adding cells or adding carriers is going to be critical for operators uh, that want to stay ahead of the game in the coming years. That makes complete sense. One last question. Everybody's talking about big data and analytics these days. Is it relevant to Sun? Absolutely, more than ever. We're integrating more and more data sources as inputs to SAN, not only KPIs, but CDR data, geolocation information, CM or uh, customer experience data, policy, and making intelligent decisions based on all of those. And not only instantaneous data, but looking at the past trends, building predictive models that use deep learning algorithms to make proactive decisions, not only reactive actions, to mitigate problems before they even happen. And all that means crunching through tons of data, looking for things that the human eye can't see. But that's the only way to manage the networks of the future. Good to know. Duran, thank you very much. That was uh, extremely helpful and informative. And you can reach Duran at D-O-R-O-N at Cisco.com. That again is Duran at Cisco.com. Thanks everybody for listening. Thank you for listening to this ISC production. We invite you to enjoy all of our future podcasts and much more at www.isemag.com. <laughs>